So you've got some jelly tips on you'd like to get rid of, you say? I have three professional ways to do that to make them look like this. It's all in the details. Let's get started. So I did these nails about two weeks ago and many of you have asked, how do you get them off? And that's such a great question because they are a do-it-yourself application. So how can you remove them yourself? I'm Susie, I have 33 years experience in the nail industry and I'm here to share all my professional tips for everyone who's watching. Welcome if you're new. I have a bowl of warm water. So I'm gonna start with my acetone. I'm gonna loosen it because I wanna warm the acetone up. When you heat it, it actually works faster. Just place it in a bowl of warm water. And then I'm just gonna put it right to the side and let it warm up. And while that's heating, we're gonna do some e-filing and filing. When you're taking off any set, honestly, this is applied with acrylic. This is a jelly tip applied with acrylic. But when you're taking off anything, you can use all three of these methods. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And we will get to that. Like I say, I'll show you that one. I don't like it, but I'll show it to you. Why don't you like doing it so cough? Uh, because it's, I have to sit and wait when uh, I could be filing. I could be doing something. Impatient. It's an impatient thing. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. I think it's actually a really genius way to do it. <laughs> but I just don't like to do it. Okay. So these are going at about two weeks. Can you see they're not too bad? They're just leaving the cuticle area, which makes it easier to taking off. Whenever you're taking stuff like this off, it's because you've worn it probably for, you probably had it on for a couple, three, maybe four, maybe five weeks. And now you want to get rid of it or you can't get to your salon. So you need to get rid of it. So what I'm going to say is, please, I beg you, do not <laughs> take a tip and shove it under and try to pry it off. Do not take dental floss, I beg you, and try to slip it under and then ease it off and take it off. Do not use those methods. And the reason being is because you will pull part of your natural nail off with it, making the foundation of your natural nail quite a bit weaker. If you're going to apply more product, that's gonna compromise your natural nail bed and the new product you put on might lift. So don't take it off with those methods. And if you go to a professional and they are taking a tip under and, sh and prying it under there and taking it off, that's not the way to do it. And of course, the professional wouldn't use dental floss. I should hope. <laughs> okay, so one way to do it is with a hand file. And the number one thing is take the length right down. That's the first thing you wanna do. Get a coarse file, get a good coarse file, Hold your nail as steady you can, like hold your little fingers in between there if you like. Back these ones up a little bit so you can get it. And literally take the file and just start taking down the length. That's the number one thing, is take down that length. So I'm just gonna file really fast. Okay, see how fast you can get that length down? That length is gone now. Now the reason why I say take the length down is because what, there's no sense of filing it thin and thin and thin and have it thin long. You have to get rid of the length. So get rid of the length first and then you're just having to deal with the depth of it. Now you just have to take your good file and now we are filing through the gel color. And again, this really depends on the good quality file that you have and just good old fashioned elbow grease. Okay, you can see I'm really getting through all the gel. The gel is pretty much gone now. Just get around the little edges, and the side edge. Just watch your cuticles in this particular part. Make sure you're filing the nail and not the cuticle, okay? And you can get a burning sensation if you're in one spot for too long, okay? You can do that with the e-file. You can also do that with a hand file. Okay, now I have the acrylic. So now, same coarse file, and I am going to just file through the gel polish, then the jelly tip, then the acrylic. Unless there's a bubble, we need to file it completely off. You can also see the depth of it and the thickness of it when you look down this way. We call this looking down the barrel of the nail. 
Now there's no barrel there right now because I filed all the length off, but you can see the thickness there. And when I keep filing it, you can see that, see, it's all just coming away now. That's part of the tip that was on there. And now the tip is sort of flaking off and now the acrylic. I'm going through, like first it was the gel polish, which we got rid of, then I was going through the tip and now we're getting to the acrylic. You can see a little, see this? This is kind of just a little education while we're in this moment. I might as well use this moment. It's a great teachable moment. There's a bit of a, um, I guess it looks like it might be a bubble. Let me just go a little bit further. Oh yeah, see that? And it just popped right off. This is the reason why if you're not experienced with filling the nails with acrylic or gel, you're best to file it all off and reapply your jelly tips again to avoid any types of these pockets. Now, a professional would see that if they're doing acrylic or gel and they would file those pockets up as they're filling. But if you don't know what to look for, uh, you might not see it. So you're best to file it all off and then reapply. And when I say all off, I'm going to say file it down to a very, very thin layer. I do this method to protect the natural nail. And I would recommend the same because natural nail product, and here's a natural nail, here's the product sitting on top. And as you're filing and filing and filing, it's really hard to, even as you're training, it's very hard to tell the difference between product and natural nail. So often we file them into each other and you can get too thin. There's no need to go that thin. You don't have to take all the product off. You can leave just a little thin layer of protection on there, even if you're applying some new stuff on, okay? That's a big, big, big tip. That's for DIYs and pros. Leave a thin layer. There's no need to take it all off. Okay. So I'll take my medium file now and see if we can Get in around the cuticle and go a little bit thinner. I still may need the roughness of the course to get right in there. Just be very mindful of your cuticle. That's good, getting right in there. Okay, so I'm almost finished. I've pretty much got it all off. I'm just doing the tiny little bits of the side there. Then I get my smooth and shine and make it a little bit smoother. It's pretty good. Now I've got a tiny thin layer on there, like the coat of polish, like just one coat of polish, right? That kind of thickness. Now I will take my fine file and just soften the free edge so it's not thin and... Um, uneven, just make it nice and even. And I'm gonna throw a little bit of my new oil on there. I love this stuff, it smells so wonderful if you're interested. And I'm gonna massage it right in. And that is completely done, that one's done now. I could put a new tip, no, I wouldn't put the oil on there if I was putting a new set on. <laughs> if I was putting more jelly tips, whether you're adhering it with hybrid gel, gel, glue, or acrylic, you would not put the oil on. And then I would have just prepped it with the prime, prep and prime, and then I would have put the product on and then put the jelly tip on again, just like I did those ones. Okay, so now we'll move on to, oh, let's get this soaking done. Now I have my little extra bowl. I'm gonna take my mask off. You don't need your mask on for this part. Now this acetone should be nicely warmed up. Now it cools off fast, I will say. But um, you could have like a shot glass for this because then you won't have to pour so much because you do need your finger to be soaked in there. Oh, I don't need to put it back in there. <laughs> then I'm gonna soak. Oh, hello. Even I can forget to do, I don't do soaking all the time because I hate it. Make sure you break the surface of the gel. It eventually probably will soak it off, but nobody wants to wait that long. So break the surface, get a good uh, file. Break the surface of that gel. And what I will do, honestly, is take the length right down because then it's just less acetone and time for it to get through there. So I will take it down quite a bit. I will take the length down. And then you wanna break the surface of the gel or the tip or the acrylic. Whatever you have on there, you wanna break the surface because 
you want the acetone to get in there and start breaking it down. So what I will do sometimes is literally take as much acrylic up off that I possibly can. And the reason why I do that, I should have my mask back on. The reason why I do that is because it takes less to soak. Because you, what you're doing is you're waiting for the acetone to get through to that gel and puff it out so it floats right off of the natural nail. So if you take as much off as possible, and the reason why, why do we do that? <laughs> because if we take as much off with the filing as possible, you're really just taking off the, the last little layers with the acetone. And those are the hardest layers to get off, to be totally honest with you. The reason being is because it's close to the natural nail bed and it can, it can be hard to get off completely because it is uh, looking like all one color. So that's what that's why this is a little bit easier. Now you can leave this on, and maybe I should just to show you. And then rest it in there. And this is the boring part. So watch some Netflix or talk to cameraman. So this is what I hate about this process. I mean, I, you can see how fast I took that index off. So for me, I would just rather file them all down, but leave a thin layer. I guess you'd have to be skilled at knowing when not to go that's too far with it. filing though, right? That's mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to show you three methods to get this off, different stages of skills according to you, whatever you want to do, right? But these are all, it's still a DIY situation because you can buy my files, you can buy e-files now, and you can get acetone. So I just wanted to show you three different ways to take it off. And this is effective if you don't mind sitting and soaking. If you don't want to do the filing, hand filing or the e-file, this is a great option. And you can just kind of scrape it off, but use a wooden cuticle stick because you don't want to scrape the natural nail when you start to get down to that far. But Doug Shoon, a chemist, a scientist in the nail world, he's wonderful and with lots of great information. I don't want to steal this quote because he said, I read it in one of his books, if you get a bucket of water and throw a paper towel in it, the acetone acts like the water and it absorbs into the paper towel and bloats it as it is into the acrylic. The acetone is soaking into the acrylic and bloats it like the, like the paper towel and then eventually it gets so bloated it just all falls off. Isn't that neat? That's, That's exactly what's happening here. Yeah. So we're just waiting for the acetone. That's why you got to buff the surface so it can soak right through. As it's starting to soak in, you just gently coax it, but don't pull it, don't pry it, don't scrape it. Okay. And I find a wooden cuticle stick great. You can see the little goop on there. Let me see if I can get some more on there. I think I might have wiped it off. But it's coming ever so slowly. Yeah, see? Cameraman, can you see that little goop on there? I can see a little bit on there. Yeah, so you can just see a little bit on there, and there's a little bit of gel on there, too. And I'm just sort of coaxing it off because I'm impatient, but I'm not scraping it. I'm just gently coaxing it. Now, if you take it out of the acetone, the air, the acetone will evaporate, and it'll stop working on you. And it might even get hard. It will get hard. If you leave it out long enough, it just gets a little bit more solid. So then stick it back in, and you just keep doing this until you've got enough off that you're happy with. Hmm. Well, I think we can do a little fast forward around yes. here. Yes, can we do that? Because I'm bored. <laughs> Back shortly. Yep. It comes off little by little, but you can sometimes see it floating away. And don't forget, it's having to go through the jelly tip and the acrylic that's underneath, right? That's all hearing it together. I do want to leave a thin layer on because that's how I do removals. So you can dry it up. And that oil did seem to help, and you can sort of see it on there still. And I'm just going to take my fine file, and I'm just shaping it up so it looks somewhat natural. And just taking down a little bit of the link. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave a thin layer. I always do with all of my nails just to protect my nail plate because I'm putting nails on and off all the time, at least once a week. So, oh yeah, it's got most of it off. It's very, very thin now. I can just feel it. So I got a nice thin layer. Okay, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to take my smooth and shine and give it a nice gentle buff. And then I am going to drop some oil on there and I'll show you how good that looks. Look at that. I've got two now off. Looks pretty good.
Okay, one last thing to show you is with the e-file. Now this is more of an advanced step for any DIYers out there. So the first one I think is the easiest, which is the acetone soak. And then um, doing the file. Actually, those two are probably pretty equivalent. So the e-file just takes a little bit more skill in learning how to use an e-file. And the best way I can tell you there is move slowly. The number one rule is brace yourself when you're filing. Find a anchor point. Find an area even on the table or on your other fingers. Find an area or on the finger you're working on. Find a place where you can anchor yourself. And do have some practice with this before you start going on your own fingers and don't work on other people. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it up to about a four or five. That's about four or five thousand RPMs. And again, start with shortening the length. So I'm going to find my point where I can hang on to it and I am going to shorten the length right off. Just a quick little tip in case you'd like to know if a nail is built properly, it'll be thicker as you head toward the apex. And you can see that guy is getting thicker, right? You can see the natural nail under there. You can see the acrylic in there. You can see the layer tip and the black gel on top. So you wanna just go right down as far as you can, as far as shortness goes. And then I'm going to remove the gel. We'll do it in layers. I mean, you can dig right through if you want, but let's just show you in layers. I'm using a ceramic bit. If you use an arbor band, you can use a coarse file only because you're not working on the natural nail. And that can be effective too. It can take a little longer. The ceramics or the carbide bits, the ceramics and the carbide bits, they will dig through a lot faster. And you don't have to have a super teethy one. You just gotta have some teeth on it. But this is a, a nice, I think this is a, more of a fine toothy one. And she can see the gel just came off, the black gel came off beautifully. And now that's the tip I'm dealing with right there. So now I'm gonna file it down. And eventually I'm going to hit the acrylic. Now, if you are filing these to put a new set on, you can leave a fair amount of this on here. Just don't leave it on the sides because that'll be the giveaway for you as far as sitting a tip on top of your natural nail. The sides will be the one, if you can't nestle it down into your finger, if it sits too high on the sides, it'll look like a tip sitting on top, okay? So if you're going to put some more on top, you'll use less product on the inside of the tip right? Because you've got some on there. Acrylic will stick to acrylic. Acrylic will stick to gel. The only one that might be a little bit different is poly gel or hybrid gel. It's technically hybrid gel, but everybody calls it poly gel. It, they, are, they don't play nice as well mixing it with acrylic and gel. They're quite different. So if you have a hybrid gel on there, get it off completely before you go ahead and put the acrylic Okay, so that's coming off there nicely. Now, as I get down closer to the natural nail, I am going to leave a very, very thin layer on there again. But as I get down there, depending on how sensitive you are for a natural nail bed, you might feel the heat. And you can feel the heat with a hand file as well. You can do the same thing. I'm going to get an arbor band now and go around the cuticles. I'm going to set that about a three or a four or five whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm just going around the cuticle area to smooth it out. Now I'm going to make another video about this, the custom fit or tips aren't a custom fit. So naturally we're going to have a little bit more thickness around here. I have two choices with my nails. They're a tiny bit curvy, as most people's are. And the tips tend to be a little bit more straighter. But with my nail being curvy, especially this one, I have two choices to be snug and fit on the tip of my finger for the tip to fit nicely and then the cuticle sticks up or to make the cuticle stick a little bit more and then it might stick up here a bit higher. It doesn't fit my nail perfectly. Like if we wore all the same pair of shoes, we're all gonna have little differences, right? So this, that's why this is a little bit thicker in here because I tried to snug it in here but I didn't want it sticking up too far. So I leaned it down a little bit and it just has thicker acrylic in there. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just something we have to live with when it comes to tips because they don't fit everybody perfectly. And if you're not having that problem, maybe your fingers or nails are a little bit more straighter. Okay, so I just keep filing this till it's nice and smooth. If you're comfortable with this kind of uh, skinny bit, this can help you go around the cuticles and get into those smaller areas to take out any gel that just might be clinging on that's just being a little bit stubborn. And it also helps to is bring those sides down, especially if you are applying another tip on there. Okay. Now, if you are um, just wanting to take these off because you can't get to your salon, this is all you have to do. Take down the length, take down the depth, and uh, leave the natural nail very short and leave a thin layer on, and then just let them grow off. And as they grow off, just keep shortening the length. And then you'll have new nail replace uh, the old nail in no time at all, and you didn't pull them off and make your natural nails sensitive to hot and cold water, sensitive to touch. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't pull them off. This is the safest, nicest way to treat your nail beds after you've had something on if you can't get to the salon to get them off. Okay, then I'm gonna take my fine file. I'm just gonna soften me corners. I could have left it square, but I like to just kind of soften the corners a little. And I'm going to take my smooth and shine, and I'm going to buff that guy so he's nice and smooth. You can see that there's a tiny little bit of product on here, it's like the, literally, it's thin, maybe even thinner than a coat of nail polish. But you can see the little bits of acrylic right along here, and this is all natural nail. Drop some oil on that bad boy, right? Let it soak in there, massage it in. There you go, right? Look how nice that is. It looks beautiful and natural. You've got 97, 98% of it off. Just with a thin layer, protect that natural nail until it kind of grows in. And remember, when it gets a little longer, just shorten it. So I will take off the others. So we will have some nice reveals and I'll slap a coat of polish on it, make it look nice and pretty. But we can check out those reveals. How adorable with a coat of high maintenance by Essie, pretty little color with a primer underneath and a top coat. They're so nicely protected and they feel good. That's what's most important. And I check out my new rings. Aren't they cute? I love them. A couple little things I want to tell you. This is here to remind me to remind you. <laughs> Ring that little bell so that you get notifications and my new oil. With my oil, it's pomegranate and lime. It'll help replenish your skin back some nice moisture after you've soaked in that acetone or removed it with all that dust. And I have the little cards included. It says correct use and incorrect use so you know exactly what to do with it and what not to do. Having any trouble with your gel polish application? Oh, it'd be so annoying. Check this video out.